Hello to my friends and associates with the Utah Mining Association. I'm John Baza, and I'm the director of the Utah Division of Oil, Gas, and Mining. I was invited to provide you with a video presentation about the Division of Oil, Gas, and Mining for your conference today. And I thought in this time of unusual circumstance in this year of 2020, that what better, more appropriate way to talk to you than through a recorded online electronic meeting. So that's what I'm doing today. And I'm going to share a slide presentation with you. And uh, I'm just gonna take a few minutes and run through a few of the things that the Division of Oil, Gas and Mining has been doing in our minerals regulatory program. So let me go ahead and present the slideshow to you and we'll go from there. <clears throat> so here is the uh, first slide I'm showing to you. It's just the title slide. Again, this is a uh, presentation regarding the mining programs of the Utah Division of Oil, Gas, and Mining. Our minerals regulatory program is one of the mining programs in the division. We also have a coal regulatory program, and we also have an abandoned mine regulatory program. The minerals regulatory program has been busy this year. And one of the items that we have worked on as a division is at Iron Mountain. In June of 2020, Iron Mountain Mine in Iron County, Utah, just west of Cedar City, was transferred from CML Resources to Black Iron LLC. Black Iron proposed the construction of a tailings pipeline and the disposal of tailings in an abandoned mine pit. This significant revision was reviewed and approved by division staff, and now the mine is processing ore. <clears throat> Here's some pictures of the, uh, of the site and the activities going on there. This shows you the previous tailings pile, and then the disposal pond, where they helped to put, uh, put uh, mine tailings. Another project that the minerals program has worked on is the Kiwit project, which is a uh, project involving Desert Hawk Gold Company. And they have proposed a significant expansion, nearly doubling their permitted area of gold mining operations just south of Gold Hill in Tooele County. Um, we have not yet approved the proposal but it's currently under review and is one of the active items on our, our to-do list. Another item a project is in Uinta County, and this is the Ramsey Hill Exploration Project involving a 211-acre mine to uh, obtain sandstone for frac sand. And this frac sand is going to be used in the hydraulically, hydraulic fracturing of oil and gas wells in Uinta County. Um, and it's my understanding from talking to uh, Dana Dean, our Deputy Director of Mining for the Division, that uh, Ramsey Hill worked with us very closely from the very start to try to iron out, it, uh, iron out any problems or issues as part of the application process. So uh, that tentative approval has been issued. But here's some other projects, both taking place in our minerals and our coal regulatory programs. I didn't want to leave out our coal program for uh, our business partners and regulated, regulated community who work in the coal area. Um, some of the other projects going on were involved the uh, gravel and aggregate mining at West Mountain and Benjamin quarries in Utah County, the Lake Mountain quarry, which is just south of Eagle Mountain in Tooele County, 
um, the Lost Sheep Mine and the Highland Mist Mine, which are uh, activities in our minerals program, as well as Pine Ridge. All of those are still in process at this point. One activity that we can bring up is the Lisbon Valley Copper Mine, which the program just recently issued a tentative approval on. But uh, in our coal program, there were at least three separate permitting revisions involving the Skyline Mine in Carbon County. So those are some other things that are going on in our regulatory programs. I did want to mention our abandoned mine reclamation program, which received the 2020 National Association of Abandoned Mine Land Programs Hard Rock Physical Safety Reclamation Award for the 2019 Red and Fry Canyon Closure Project in San Juan County. These involve old uranium mining activities, and you can see some of the portals that were addressed as part of the project in this photograph. It involved 62 hazardous mining openings that were closed, backfills, masonry walls, foam plugs, and steel gates and grates. There were also 12 electrical transformers on site dating back to the 1950s and 60s that were removed and disposed of from two mines. 12 of the sites were eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. The project was funded by the Bureau of Land Management and the Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement. And here's some pictures of the transformer removal in one case. Um, there was also some effort to create rock wall closures that mimicked native rock walls that you might see in the immediate area. On the one on the left, you can see the construction of the rock wall. On the picture on the lower right, there's a uh, stone wall that was erected behind some old timbers that were retained as part of the, uh, to uh, retain the character and historic features of the mine. So those are some recent activities involving the mining programs of the Division of Oil, Gas and Mining. Um, again, this is a video presentation. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. I would be happy to answer any questions at a later time once you've viewed the video and would like to reach out to me by email or contact me at the division and uh, be happy to spend some time with you and talk with you more about these projects. Thank you very much.